Game of Thrones is. It's not just about a magic dragon flying around with a hat on, it's really good too. <laughs> it is, Game of Thrones is really good because, it's really clever actually, Stu, because Game of Thrones <laughs> is about, you know, uh, politics and history and things like that. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Peter Stringfellow's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Bilbo Baggins and the Spearmint Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> Have you actually watched Game of Thrones? Have you ever watched Game of Thrones? Because I've had the same experience of sitting around with a Terry Pratchett novel in one hand and a copy of Hustlers Barely Me in the other hand. Have you actually watched Game of Thrones, Merlin? It's really good. No, I haven't watched Game of Thrones. If I want to understand the ongoing clash of dynastic powers, while simultaneously being mildly sexually aroused. <laughs> I'll forcibly dress David Starkey in agent provocateur underwear. <laughs> and pay him to pole dance with Simon Sharma. <laughs> and you actually watched Game No, I haven't watched Game of Thrones. I have not watched Game of Thrones. And I shall never watch Game of Thrones. I shall take no wife, hold no lands, father no children, I shall wear no crown and win no glory, and I shall not watch Game of Thrones. Yeah, you like that, don't you? You know what? I don't even fucking know what that is. Right? Yeah, listen to Game of Thrones fans. I copied that off the side of a mug in HMV. And I don't even know what it is. Okay? Basically, you can do 10 minutes on Game of Thrones, and all you need to know is something you read on a mug. Right, that's all you need to know. <laughs> you know, she watched Game of Thrones. No, I haven't watched Game of Thrones. If I want to understand the ongoing clash of dynastic powers, while simultaneously being barely semi-tumescent, <laughs> as usual, <laughs> I'll read Tolstoy's War of Peace, while sitting over the wheel arch of a diesel-powered double-decker bus. <laughs> yes, mate, old school, analog. <laughs> All the old fellas in tonight. <laughs> yeah, old days, just bad, wasn't it? There's no internet then, just to score on the bus. Hey, I've got a job for you, right? I've got a job for you. I've got a job for you. Do you know, uh, I'll tell you what, there's, there's so many naked young women in the Game of Thrones. <laughs> Just checking back there for the old PC brigade. Yeah, <laughs> kid in the wings, Gary Lineker's Stasi thought police. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's so many naked young women in the Game of Thrones. It's hardly surprising, madam, what stunted Tyrion Lannister's growth. <laughs> and we're wanking, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he wanked himself into being a dwarf. <laughs> He was six foot six in the pilot episode. Hang on a minute, Stu. Wasn't that a sizes joke about the dwarf community? Yes, it was! <laughs> but they ridiculed the dwarf community in order to satirise the ongoing sexual exploitation of young women in mainstream media. So it cancels it out. <laughs> It's the kind of split-second collateral damage decision Frankie Boyle has to make every time he owns his bag. <laughs> Who decides, Stu? Who is the moral arbiter of right and wrong in stand-up comedy? Who is the self-appointed sole judge of morality in stand-up? It's me, I am. 